China has been rapidly catching up with the US in terms of its military. Whether it's with new aircraft carriers, warships, submarines, stealth fighters, drones, and many more. But there is now one area that China seems to have the lead. Missiles. Their new hypersonic missile that circled the Earth twice, for example, which made major news recently. Or their anti-ship ballistic missiles, like the DF-21D. Or even their PL-15, and now PL-21, extremely long-range, air-to-air missiles carried by fighter jets. All of these exceed what the US has, or simply nothing even close exists in the US right now. The US has been reportedly struggling with even developing shorter range hypersonic missiles, let alone ones with intercontinental range that can enter Earth orbit. They have no ballistic anti-ship missiles, and the anti-ship missiles that they do have are all slow, subsonic ones that are not deployed in large numbers. And the US has been using the same radar-guided air-to-air missile for 30 years, the AMRAAM. So why is this? The US spends three times more than China on their military, so you would assume that they could easily outmatch them. But, here at least, this doesn't seem to be the case. But first, real quick, our sponsor, NordVPN. You need to get a VPN for numerous reasons. Websites tracking your data, hackers trying to steal your data, and governments potentially watching all your data. So many people make sure they're physically safe, but then they ignore their digital safety. NordVPN uses double data encryption to keep you safe, especially when you're using public Wi-Fi. They have over 5,100 servers in 60 different countries, they do not track your data, peer-to-peer -peer sharing is allowed, and much more. All of which have resulted in them being constantly recommended by technology experts, and winning them numerous awards. And right now, they're having their Black Friday deal. So go over to nordvpn.com covert, get a two-year plan, and you'll get an additional month free with a huge discount. Two years of cybersecurity for only $3.16 a month. And, as always, they have their 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not happy, you can get a full refund. Again, NordVPN. There's been many major innovations that have changed warfare. World War II is probably the best example due to the rapid advances made. Things like jet engines giving its users massive advantages in aerial combat, heat, or high-explosive anti-tank shape charges, which enabled a single soldier the ability to take on even the most heavily armored tanks, nuclear weapons, and all sorts of missiles. And whoever holds that technological lead often gains a massive advantage over their adversaries. And more often than not, ever since the end of World War II, the US has held that technological lead. Things like nuclear weapons, satellite navigation, and precision-guided cruise missiles that can strike targets a thousand miles away. Technological edges like this arguably kept the US in the lead over the Soviet Union during the Cold War and as a sole superpower afterward. But now, that technological lead has mostly vanished. They still use that Tomahawk cruise missile, for example. And now China, Russia, and even smaller countries like Iran and North Korea have their own. In fact, nearly every missile the US has today has been around since the Cold War. The AMRAAM, Sidewinder, the Patriot Air Defense System, the Hellfire Missile, Maverick, Harpoon, Harm, the Minuteman ICBM, Trident SLBM, and many more. Now, don't get me wrong, they have all been upgraded over the years, but they are still the same base platform. Those upgrades did not enable any major military innovation or breakthrough that would keep the US in the lead. Right now, the cutting edge of missile technology and the possibility for major innovation appears to lie in hypersonics. These are speeds greater than five times the speed of sound. It is extremely difficult to not only achieve, but maintain, be able to guide and maneuver, and precisely strike a target. And that's due to the physics involved. For example, temperatures can reach over 2,000 degrees Celsius. That's 600 degrees higher than even the melting point of steel. And those high speeds create incredibly high structural and aerodynamic loads. So that's the cutting edge right now. And that's where the opportunity for innovation most obviously lies. And just as most other major military innovations, the US had the early lead here. They began test flying hypersonic vehicles way back in 2001. However, they did not go anywhere. No hypersonic weapons or aircraft ever went into service. Instead, China has taken the lead. Their recent test of the hypersonic, orbital-capable weapon really demonstrated this. It reportedly left the US completely surprised, and many comparing it to the Sputnik crisis, where the Soviet Union shocked the US with an apparent massive technological advantage over them. So why can't, or hasn't, the US built their own? Well, in some ways they have. 
In reaction to the test, China stated that it was not a hypersonic missile test, but instead a test of a space plane. Now, whether that is true or not, both are similar in many ways. Both are unmanned, they fly into orbit, and have the ability to come back down to Earth at a precise point. In this sense, the US already has one, with the X-37B. It's an unmanned space plane that enters orbit and can re-enter autonomously at hypersonic speeds and guide itself down to Earth with enough accuracy to land on a runway, the major difference being the speed at which they hit the ground. A space plane obviously wants to do so softly so it can be reused, whereas a missile hits extremely fast, destroying itself and anything around it on the ground. But the fact still remains that the US lags behind in this and even shorter range hypersonics and there's been some pretty high-profile failures of weapons that they're trying to develop. However, it's difficult to gauge what this implies in terms of comparisons to China, as China does not announce or allow any discussion of their failures. The other obvious lead China currently has is their game-changing anti-ship ballistic missile. Unlike normal anti-ship missiles, this flies extremely fast and it comes down to attack a ship from above, both of which make it extremely difficult to defend against. This is a major innovation as it has to accurately hit a relatively small, moving target, a ship. There is no analog right now in the US to this. They had the Pershing-2 ballistic missile, which had a similar range and the ability to maneuver to accurately hit a smaller target, but it was decommissioned due to the signing of the INF Treaty in 1988. This I think explains one of the reasons why the US doesn't have such a weapon as that DF-21D. Another reason is simple geography. China faces threats from the US and allies' warships pretty much right off their coast, so they needed a way to counter them. The US, on the other hand, sits several thousand miles away from any serious threat, so no real necessity exists. But now, with China operating their own aircraft carriers, and the US no longer limited by the INF Treaty, we could see them develop their own in the next few years. And finally, the PL-15, an extremely long-range air-to-air missile. Long-range air-to-air missiles are nothing new necessarily. Things like the AIM-54 Phoenix and the R-33 were developed 50 years ago, but they were huge, really limiting what aircraft could carry them, how many they could carry, and the range and maneuverability of that aircraft. This new PL-15 isn't only more capable, but also small enough to fit internally on their J-20. Here, again, the US lags behind. While the AMRAM has been upgraded over the years, this PL-15 still has up to twice the range, and range is important in aerial combat. Being able to shoot first forces your enemy to go on the defensive, giving you the advantage. And it's really useful against things like airborne early warning aircraft, tankers, drones, etc. The US has now finally began to work on a replacement for AMRAM, with their AIM-260 JATAM, and this development is directly in response to China's PL-15 but it again demonstrates that the US is lagging behind and having to play catch up. So why is the US behind in these? Well, pretty much for all those reasons stated, either being limited by treaties or not having the necessity or even complacency. After the Cold War, the US had no real equal or anyone even close to being an equal, so they didn't have an urgent need. As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention, Again, World War II created a massive necessity, hence the massive innovations and new technologies that arose out of it. China's current desire to rise to a global superpower necessitates innovation, hence their rapid growth in military tech so that they can compete with the US. And now, to stay ahead of China, the US is going to have to innovate. However, in the US, it appears that many politicians seem to think that means just throwing more money at the military. Money itself does not work. It requires finding ways to be more efficient with the money you have. I think what SpaceX is doing right now is a good example of this. Instead of spending a few billion dollars building dedicated offshore launch and landing platforms, they decided to buy existing oil rigs for just a couple million dollars and convert them. On top of that, to lift and move around rocket stages, instead of buying or building brand new equipment, they are now looking at using the winches and cranes that came along with the oil rigs. So, money can only get you so far. It requires much more to truly innovate and stay in the lead. And without doing so, the US can no longer expect to have an edge.